Welcome back, soulmates. When it comes to black collegiate culture, there's one thing we have to mention, and that is the marching Yeah, game. so whether you would like the flag girl, girl a major red, a section leader, or just a, a, a complete fan, it's a, it's a big vital part of black history, and our good friends at Fox 5 are gonna bring us this story. One band, one sound. It's a phrase band students know very well, especially at historically black colleges and universities. But don't take it from us. One band, one sound um, definitely was introduced to me very quickly <laughs> on day one of band camp for sure. HBCU marching originated in the South for military bands. And since then, it's grown into one of the best marketing tools for institutions. I marched in the band all my life, um, especially in high school, um, dancing in the band as well. Um, I seen them at that exhibition and it was it was no question where I was going. I knew that, and I was at the time 14, 15 maybe. Lakeisha and Frank Johnson marched in the International Institution of Sound at Johnson C. Smith University in North Carolina. Their experience on day one, shocking. Day one of band camp was wow. <laughs> <laughs> I marched in high school in a core style uh, band, mm -hmm. and it was, it, was, it was great. It was, you know, I learned a lot of fundamentals and things of that nature, but the physical nature that you know requires mm -hmm. you know to build the stamina in a, mm -hmm. a show style mm -hmm. band uh, mm -hmm. was a little different mm -hmm. for me. I thought I was at the first day of basketball tryout. The feeling is similar across the board. Some long nights, some hot days, some repeated run throughs, and some weekends. Sometimes we marched on weekend, practice on weekend. I didn't like that as much, but I like the end result. Practice does make perfect with us, and we do believe that in our program. But despite those hardships, everyone marches out with the same outlook. Being a part of an HBCU has brought different networking skills, being able to meet new people, being able to have so many fun and enjoy experiences along the way. I was able to become a member of Kappa Kappa Psi while at a and I also was section leader my last year, performed in a second Honda Battle of Bands in January of 2009. As a matter of fact, it was life changing. I felt like I came back and I came back home. That's how I felt. I felt like I was amongst family. Life, it made me want to travel more, maybe want to see the world, makes me want to see other things than the South. <laughs> Ali CD, Fox 5 News. Yes! And every time I see something like this, I go, doggone it. Should I have chosen an HBCU? Listen, we, 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 we just got to send you on a story to an HBCU so you can get that out of your system. Well, been there. every single time you see the HBCU marching band, I it is nuts. a trip down memory because, lane. Because I'm a, I'm a musician, first and foremost, uh -huh. and I'm sensitive. About, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the instrumentation, the fact that, you know, a lot of them, you know, well, you're required to read music, but the, the fact that a lot of them just can just listen to a score and just pick it up immediately, the natural natural ability and the talent, the coordination. I mean, it's just it's just fabulous. And, you know, there was, I can't remember, uh, there was something that was just Nash, an HBCU matchup that was just nationally te televised not too long ago. <laughs> and uh, somebody wasn't on the panel, wasn't in the boardroom or something because they cut uh, to other coverage or, uh, you know, um, the the play-by-play -play or whatever uh -huh. during halftime. Somebody didn't tell them that, listen, you know, we stay in our seats during halftime and the camera needs to stay on the field during halftime. They, they treated it kind of like just a regular old college football game where you just see the band for two seconds, mm -hmm. you know, as they go to the commercial or something. So it is just an awesome, I, I, you know, I didn't attend HBCU, but I've been to a lot of the, you know, head to head uh, yeah. competitions. I've hosted a few of those things and amazing, amazing musicians. Yeah, and even, amazing. and even for the people that haven't attended an HBCU, uh, haven't had that experience, what I love so much about Beyonce's Homecoming mm -hmm. uh, documentary on Netflix is that it gives you a taste of that experience. And I just love, 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 love that Beyonce uh, really uh, uh, incorporated uh, HBCU marching bands into that epic, 
epic, epic documentary. And so it's Black History Month. You know, if you're on Netflix, you should check it out. Yeah. Um, but I'm also thinking about my god sister, Demetria, who watches us in Texas, uh, who was in the marching band in high school at Pittsburgh High School. Uh, that was sort of the first band person I ever met. And mm. she had that HBCU wa swag uh, even before I knew what HBCU swag Ooh, looked like okay. uh, in the marching band. And so shout out to Demetria, who's watching. All right, and big ups to uh, folks in Dallas watching. We appreciate you. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, off to the Congo, where Pope Francis started a six-day visit to Congo and South Sudan on Tuesday, hoping to bring a message of peace to two nations troubled by poverty, conflict, and a colonialist mentality that still views Africa as exploitable. Pope Francis told the government and civic leaders, quotes, may Africa be the protagonist of its own destiny. Aid groups hope his visit will bring international attention back to Africa's worst humanitarian crisis, but it also puts Pope Francis face to face with the future of the Catholic Church in Africa, which is growing. Pope Francis wants to reshape the church as a, quote, field hospital for wounded souls, where all are welcome and poor people have a special place. All right, so Mace, here's another one of those great follow-up stories. Yale University recently held a ceremony highlighting Bobby Wilson. She's the nine-year-old who was reported to police by her Republican neighbor while she was catching lantern flies. You may remember that story. Now, the young researcher was celebrated for her efforts toward capturing the invasive species that was investing, uh, infesting rather Caldwell, New Jersey. The ceremony was almost was also rather a moment for the university to show its gratitude to Wilson for donating her personal collection of insects as an addition to the database at Yale's Peabody Museum, making Little Miss Bobby Wilson officially one of the museum's contributing scientists. We love to see it. Mm -hmm. You know what else we also love to see uh, is that after a few passion swings, this black entrepreneur launched his own business. African-American businessman Bill Powell designed the first integrated golf course catering to African-Americans called the Clearview Golf Club. Powell purchased 78 acres of land in partnership with his wife, Marcella, after his forced bank application was denied and built the course by hand, which opened in 1948 with nine holes and multiple fence posts. Powell died at the age of 93, but Larry and Renee Powell continue to run the golf course. And a 67-year-old black woman from D.C. celebrates graduating high school as the oldest in her class from Goodwill Excel Center. That's a tuition-free adult charter high school. She says, quote, I raised the roof on where I'm going. The school awards high school diplomas to adult learners and consists of five terms, each uh, eight weeks long, despite the challenges. Miss Carroll says her classmates kept her motivated. She also mentioned that her younger uh, individuals rallied behind her and supported her during her return to school after a 40 year hiatus. It's never too late to accomplish something that you may have missed out on or had been or been maybe rerouted from in regards to where our lives have a tendency to go and splinter off and and to have this uh you know circle back moment is just uh, amazing and it speaks to uh, achievement it speaks to um uh, tenacity and it speaks to completion you know sometimes it takes a minute but as long as you get to that completed moment you're good that's right that's right it's not how you start it's how you finish that's right uh and you know Re really watching the story, it made me think of uh, one of my colleagues from graduate school, Dr. Deb Gates. Well, before she was Dr. Deb, mm. she was just Deb. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she was in her mid-50s when she uh, went back to, to graduate school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she was one of the senior members uh, of our cohort. Uh, and uh, I'm just so proud that we had an opportunity to share that experience together. Um, I have a feeling that uh, her being in class probably had an effect on the level of discussion and discourse mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in those classes uh, than they might have uh, 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 had without her. And so I really uh, am glad that we saw this and I hope that our soulmates that are watching, that are thinking about, mm, are should I go back to school or are not encouraged. go back to school? Be encouraged mm -hmm. by this story because you're right, Courtney, it's never, never too, too late. late.
All right, coming up uh, next, Deion Sanders is getting a little too real. I mean, how, how much more real can C Coach Prime get with uh, reporters? Find out what he said after the break. That's right. Plus, Chad Johnson is sharing details about his savings account. We'll tell you just <laughs> how he says he kept it from the NFL. You're watching Fox Soul's Black Report. We'll be right back.